Hi, Florette here, and thank you for joining me today at Ink on 3. We're going to do some fun no-line coloring with the new Fade Out No-Line Coloring Detail Ink. We're going to watercolor this little dragon here and then cut him out with the die, the coordinating die, and we're going to be using Tombow markers and some colored pencils. When using the fade out no line coloring ink, it's always very important to make sure that your stamp is very clean. So scrub it with a nice microfiber cloth, some stamp cleaner, or some dish detergent and water, and make sure you get all the any residual ink you may have had on there from a previous stamping session. Because the idea is the ink is very, very light, and we don't want to pick it up any color from ink that we've had on our stamp in the past. I wanted to show you what would happen if your stamp is not cleaned all the way. You can see at the front of the dragon here, there's a little bit darker color, whereas the rest of the dragon is that very pale, creamy, grayish tone that the ink is designed to look like. It's a very, very pale color so that it fades out into the background or takes on the color of the watercolors you're using. So this was an example of not having the stamp completely clean. Now that we know our stamp is clean, we've cleaned it with a microfiber cleaning cloth, some stamp cleaner or dish detergent, we're ready to go. I also have my watercolor paper in here since I know I'm going to be using watercolor markers. So we're going to ink it up the fade out onto our stamp and a light touch is all you need. If you want to double stamp it to have a darker image, you can do that also. The ink will fade a little bit over 24 hours, so if you're using colored pencils or Copics or anything like that, it will fade even more into the background. But when we're using watercolors, the ink is actually going to take on the color of the watercolor that you put on top. So I've got my lightest color of Tombow marker and I'm just going to scribble a little bit on this little palette that you can get through Tombow or you can use a stamping block or something like that. Um, you're going to get the same look if using just regular watercolors as well. Always the key is a little water goes a long way. So I'm just going to get a little water on my brush. Always have a paper towel handy to dab off any excess water. Now I'm just going to take that lightest color and I'm simply going to brush it along the edge of my dragon and you're going to see that right away the color is going to pick up the ink is going to grab the color and I'm going to pull this up here so you can see that see how it's grabbing the color as I lay it down so you're not losing those details so I'm going to go ahead and color the rest of him in and put a little music on so you can watch the process Now that I've got all of that just mapped out in the light purple, I'm going to start adding a little bit of shading with a little bit of darker near the edges. But I've got these great lines now that are now a purple color to see what I'm doing. You can see here I'm adding just a little bit of shadow underneath and then I'm going to blend it with just a little bit of water. Add a little shadow detail here and then blend a little bit of water. And then I'm going to do the top section. I'm not doing any shading that would be the light directing. I'm just giving him some little shading to bring out a roundness to him. So I'm shading all the edges. That's an easy way to get that nice shaded look without thinking about where your light source is coming from. And if you're using a small amount of water, it's going to dry fairly quickly so that you're not going to, you're going to be able to continue coloring a little faster. And then maybe under his little arm here, I'm going to put a little deeper purple.
Now I'm going to grab another color. I'm going to grab this 676 to add even just a little bit deeper shade. Now that I've got my lightest color mapped out, I'm going to grab a little of this. And if it blends into my other color, that's great too. And I'm just going to add a little more to give him a little more dimension. And again, you'll see it's picking up the colors that I'm laying on top. And this is really going to make him come to life, adding like the different shades of purples. And then I can blend the edges so they're nice and soft. I'm going to do the same on the bottom here. But you can see it's the ink is magically grabbing the color that I lay on top. So I'm not losing my details. And it's really so much fun to watch it come together. And it makes you look like you're an incredible artist. And it's just, it takes a little patience and a little time, but once you get the hang of this, you are going to love doing it. And it really is a very easy process. Just using a small amount of water is the key. Now look at all of that detail already. So now I'm going to come in and just add a little pink to the top of his tail. And it's going to grab those lines again so I don't lose the detail. And then I can see I missed a little of his foot, so I'm going to grab it on there. And then he's got another little foot back here. And a good tip on your brush is also going to help you a lot. I, You'll see I have a water brush, but I don't typically use it to paint with. I more use it to put a little water on my mat that I can dip in. I also have a little cup to rinse out my water, if my brush, if I need to get it a little bit cleaner. All right, so now we've got that color laid down. I think that looks really cute. We're gonna add some blue to his little belly. So I'm gonna rinse off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel. I'm gonna grab a blue marker, and this is the Tombow 452. I think it goes really nice with this purples. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna grab a little color and brush it over the wings. And magically, you can see the lines become the color of the blue, doing the work for me. And then if I want to add my shading in, after that, I can do that. And I'm going to grab some and just swipe it along his little belly. And you'll see the little lines in his belly are going to come to life, just like the rest of them did. Now hold that. Look at that. See the little lines? They've all come back. And then if I want to add a little depth to his little belly, I'm just going to add a little darker at the base here. And then I'm going to do the same to the wing. I think I'm just going to add just some color coming in through the top. So I have some color variants. and blend it with my water. Now that we have that, we could stop there, but I thought what I would do, you're just gonna let that dry. it only take a few minutes or you can hit it with your heat gun and we'll move on from there. Now that that's all dry, I'm gonna come in and put some details in it. So he's got these little scales on the top of his head. I'm gonna come in with my purple marker and just dab those in and it's gonna pick up the lines from the marker. The ink is gonna pick up all of those little details. And I'm gonna do the same here. I'm just gonna dab it in and get his little scales. And then I might put some little dots because I think they have cute little dragon freckles. So I'm gonna put some little dots in the top of his head and maybe some on his cheek here. That looks cute. Then I'm going to take a pencil 
and I'm going to do some coloring with pencil just to add some uh, more detail. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You could just use your markers, but I think sometimes it's a little easier to use the pencil. So I'm going to use some gray to color in his little horn here. And then I'm going to come back into that with my white gel pen over the top. For his eye, I'm going to be able to do this beautiful green because the ink is just going to disappear behind it. Look at that gorgeous little eye. But the ink is just guiding me all the way. And because I want to see that eye really well, I'm going to grab a little bit darker shade of green and just kind of edge that and maybe on the bottom here. And it's always good to add some darker colors around your lighter colors to give you the depth and dimension. And then around his little eye, I'm gonna bring in a nice brown and I'm gonna follow his little cheek line. And then around his eye, kind of like a little eyeliner. <laughs> And then I thought it'd be nice to add a little of this um, rouge color. This is PC994 of the Prismacolor pencils. And I'm just going to add a little pink to the bottom to give it some more color because I think that'll give it a little more dimension. And it, it looks really pretty with these purples. And I'm going to put a little around his little ear and maybe around his little arm and even around the top of the head. And you can just keep layering and layering as much as you want. Or if you wanna leave it pale, you can leave it pale. But I just love that extra little bit added to it. And then I'm gonna grab a pink to give him a little cheek here. Just going to color right over the top of that. And then I'm going to grab some blue and add a little more detail to the bottom of his little belly. And then to the wings. So you can really have fun with this. Then I'm going to grab a blender pen and we, they do, we do have these at Ink on 3. It's a finesse colorless blender pen. And it's going to melt any of the wax so that it's going to look like I watercolored those additional colors that I added. Or it'll look like you, it's just going to blend it. It takes away the waxiness of the pencil. And it's just going to blend it so beautifully all together. Look how cute he's looking. And now I just noticed I j missed some of the little scales behind his head here. So I'm just going to dab those in. I missed a little of his head there. Then I can add some of this pencil to make it all go together. Oh, he's looking so cute. All right, so now I'm going to take my white gel pen. And I'm going to just highlight the top part of his horn. And that's going to give me a nice shadow on the underside. And I'm going to put a little dot in his eye. So we're bringing that little highlight back to his eye. And maybe put a couple little dots in his wing. I think that looks really cute. And maybe even a little swipe at the top of his head, like a little highlight. And at the bottom of his little leg. I just think this is so cute. And then we want to put in his little nose. But you can see the fade out guides you every step of the way. And there, look at that cute little dragon that we did. Isn't he adorable? And then I also want to blend, I noticed I didn't blend around his eye. So I'm just going to grab this and just kind of blend those browns in around his eye just to soften the pencil. But I really want this to be a very soft, pretty image. And there we have him. He's all colored and we're going to cut him out now with our dies. 
Now I'm going to use the little die from the coordinating die set for Magic Dragons. I'm just going to line it up around him, like so. Use a little washi tape, and then run him through our die cutting machine. Now we've run our little dragon through the die cutting machine. He's all ready to pop out. There you go. And now he's ready to be popped on a card, on a tag, or in your planner, or anything else you'd like to do with him. I think he's really cute. So I hope you found this very helpful, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you back. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.